Welcome to this tutorial on working with the Page Layout tab in Excite Pro. We'll use this tab to customize the look and feel of our site. We'll start by dissecting the various panels and footers that comprise your average web page. We'll determine elements such as size and spacing, and even adding some images to our layout. We'll then insert a navigation menu or two, take a quick look at the designer, and finally, we'll preview the results. In our last tutorial, I showed you how to create a project and add one or more websites to it. As you can see here, I've added several more sites to my cycling project since then. Today, we'll be working with Mike's Mountain Bikes. Most professionally created websites are split up into a series of panels and footers. There are seven in all. All the major sites such as eBay, Amazon.com, and Expedia will have at least five of these elements. This page on Expedia has all seven. A header, left panel, main panel, right panel, main panel footer, page footer, and margins. For Mike's Mountain Bikes, we can control all these elements. On the Page Layout tab, all our panel controls run down the left-hand side of the window. And on the right, you'll see a preview pane that changes in appearance as you alter the settings of your various panels. Let's begin at the top with the page header. If we wanted a quick and dirty header, we could simply specify a background color and click Use Custom HTML to make it appear. We could adjust the height and padding thickness of our header and then use the designer to implement the header's actual content. Like so. More on the designer in a moment. But this time we're going to use a background image instead. We'll uncheck Use Custom HTML and instead navigate to a background image we prepared earlier. If needed, we can adjust the alignment, though if you're going to make a background image, my suggestion would be to plan ahead a bit and make the width of your image the same size as your total page width. Now we simply finish things off by adding some keyword-rich alt text to the image. This will help in the searchability of your image and the page in general, and may even boost your placement in the search engines. Okay, let's go on to our left panel. We can adjust the width to accommodate all manner of content. However, you must always be mindful of the total width of your left, main, and right panels. If you want your content to display correctly on smaller monitors, then the width of those three panels shouldn't exceed 780 pixels or so. For our design, we should have room to spare. I don't think we'll need more than 100 pixels for the left panel. Note that we can also adjust the padding, that is, how far from the border of the panel our text and other elements will appear. 5 to 10 pixels of padding is usually quite sufficient. Next, we have to make the important decision of whether we want the site's navigation menu to appear in this panel. If so, then links to any pages we add will automatically appear in the panel. So, let's make sure that Include Navigation Menu is checked. Again, we can choose whether we want a solid color or a background image. This time, we'll select a color, which you can do in one of two ways. You can either click the button to have the Window Color Palette dialog appear, or simply choose a color from the drop-down list. We'll pick Dim Gray. Of course, the black text doesn't look too good over such a dark background. There's, there's not enough contrast. I'll use the color palette this time and choose white. Nice. You can also alter the font size as well as the font itself from their corresponding drop down lists. While you have access to pretty much every font on your system, you might want to limit your font choices to those found on most computers or the result could look drastically different for those viewers who don't have your font on their systems. Now the main panel offers most of the same options. The only thing we'll do here is increase the width to 470. 
Let's also check to include a main panel footer. Down here we can place any information we like, but for now we'll simply include a footer menu. For those keeping score at home, that's two navigation menus we now have. One in the left panel, and one down here in the main panel footer. These menus can have the exact same or entirely different sets of links, with any degree of overlap you like. And we'll show you how to set this up when we get to our next tutorial on creating web pages. Now, onto the right panel. We'll widen it a bit to make it the exact length of our header and footer graphics. And we're going to need the extra room for some content we'll be putting in there. We can skip over placing a navigation menu here, since we already have one in the left panel. The rest of the options should look quite familiar by now. Let's change the background color to a nice light blue. Good. Now, let's add some content. With a click of the designer button, we can add some text and or images to the right panel that will show up on each and every page. I'm going to paste in the testimonial of the month. You can use any of the formatting tools to change the look if you like. And you can find out a lot more about these tools in our tutorial on the design view. For now though, let's move on to our page footer. I'm going to include another image for the bottom of each page. Okay, let's have a look. Uh-oh, it looks like we'll have to adjust the height of the page footer in order to be able to view the entire image. Ah, that's much better. And in the Page Margins panel, a lovely texture for the background image will also do nicely. People will see this background whenever their browser window is wider than the combined total of your left, main, and right panels. For those wider browser windows, we can choose whether we want our content flush with the left of the window or centered in the window. If desired, we can also leave a bit of extra room at the top and bottom for a nice sales letter effect. Now, let's proof our page layout in an actual browser. Just click Preview. Yeah, not too exciting yet. But it will become a lot more so when we actually start adding some pages, which we'll be doing in our very next tutorial. To summarize, we learned about all the parts of the page layout tab, including its various panels, footers, and the auto-updating preview pane. We learned how to manipulate these elements in order to create a basic site design. Now things get really interesting, so stay tuned for our next tutorial on creating web pages.